Okay, so now that our main landing gear is on the plane, I decided to move on to horizontal stabilizer installation. And a quick PSA or note for you guys is even though with this tongue and groove uh, slide in style, or there's a lot of people who think you can just set slide this in, glue it, and forget it. But uh, I am happy that I myself have put the wings on, slid it in, and actually checked. Because as you can see in the photos here, that it was at least a good quarter inch off. So, with that being said, I had to modify the slot a bit. I had to remove a bit of wood from here to get it to fit, as well as take a file to here as you can see and that actually did end up working to where i was i'm able to square this 100 percent right on the money now that we have got this uh stabilizer nice and squared and where we want it we are going to glue it in with some i first like to tack it down with some thin ca pretty much around the joints here we'll use those pipettes again to dribble thin ca in the slots here and then once, and we'll just tack it in place, and then we check the measurements again, just to make sure we're still uh, on where we want to be. And if we're not, we can make or break the CA loose or make adjustments, whatever we need to do. But if we are on and we are satisfied with where the alignment of the stabilizer, I then take some medium CA, and I don't know if you can see it, but you can get a small pipette in there, and you can really medium CA this stabilizer into place. So now that our horizontal stabilizer is installed, I went ahead and slid on the rudder. Um, I did take a hobby knife through the uh, hinge slots in the vertical stabilizer here, just to make it slightly easier for me to slide on the actual rudder. Um, no big deal, I do that in most of my builds. But anyway, after that, I went ahead and checked the counterbalance gap, which this looks really good. And the covering lines also match up really nice as well. We are ready to go ahead and glue the rudder into place but we want to make sure we have the proper hinge gap for the most deflection we can get and the easiest way to do this is push this rudder on as far as it will go and then deflect this surface as much as it will go you see i am hitting the elevator here and i'm hitting the elevator here and then return it back to center and this will give you the proper hinge gap to where they will move it or where it will move the most amount of travel the easiest and give you the easiest life for your or the least amount of resistance for your servo basically so that being said we are ready to go ahead and thin ca the rudder hinges in place so let's go ahead and get that done So now that our rudder is installed and it's moving nice and freely, we can now move on to installing the tailwheel. And this is a pretty self-explanatory setup. The rod slides through this ball link here. And obviously as the rudder moves, the ball link uh, hits the rod and makes our tailwheel steer left and right. How about that? Neat little simple setup and I like it. So the only thing I did do is I took out the set screws on each of these wheel collars here and I put Loctite on them because all three of them did not have Loctite on from the factory. Like I said, metal to metal, we use Loctite. So I backed all, all three of them and just put Loctite on. And then I screwed them back on and they were good to go. But obviously this is really simple. The rest thing, the only thing we have to do is just screw on the bracket here with these two wood screws. Screw in the screws, make the threads, and then harden them again with thin CA and then slide the rod in obviously and we're done and by the way this ball link uh literally just like snapped into place and it's so it's in there so good that i can pick up the tail no problem with it i will put a drop of thin ca though just to make sure it is in there nice and secure 
But with all that being said, let's go ahead and install the tailwheel. Also wanted to mention that this uh, fairing here is available to install and that actually goes here on the back of the tailwheel. If I were to install it, I'd have to physically remove the bracket here and then insert it into here and then screw it back down, which I guess I could do that, but since it's already screwed in and me personally, I really don't like this look of a fairing on the back. Um, all my other planes have just had just look like this, so I'm not gonna worry about it, but if y'all wanna go ahead and put that on, that is how you do so. Okay, so now that we have got this plane on its main legs, uh, landing gear here, we are, I think it is time to go ahead and bolt the motor and power setup on. So uh, I kind of prepped the T motor, uh, 600 AM 600 525 KV motor that I'm gonna be using for this project. I kind of prepped it already by uh, screwing on this mount and making sure I use blue Loctite on the screws. I then also uh, put the motor on and noticed that the wires come really close to hitting this ledge right here. So I went ahead and then ground that down with a Dremel tool. And now I have plenty of clearance. Well, not plenty, but there is definitely a lot better clearance now for those wires. And then I also spent some time finding out uh, which spacers I was going to need to space this motor out far enough to where this cowl fits on really nice with this spinner and the prop. And it turned out to be with this T motor that just these four spacers here that are this thick, I guess I don't have a thickness on them, but they're pretty much the four thickest spacers in the package was enough to get in a really nice cowl and spinner gap with this motor. And I also went ahead and soldered on an XT90 because that is what I use on this AM116 amp ESC. But anyway, let's go ahead and get the time lapse set up and get our power setup installed. that the motor and ESC are installed. Um, this ESC is really nice because it has slots for zip ties to pass through and we can zip tie it to the frame here and it's uh, in place really nice. All right as you can see the cowl is pre preliminarily on I guess if you want to say it but I did want to show how awesome the cowl mounting setup on this plane works and how it works is basically if I pull this down and off comes right off now uh, why it had to go down is because it latches on with these two bottom latches on this cow ring right here as you can see and those latches uh, how do I say intertwine with these notches in the motor box uh, formers right here and that is how you put the cow on so you slide it these uh, screw tabs right here through these slots in the cowl right here. There's one on the left and right side. So basically that's all you do is you slide it on just like that. And then so I'm gonna hand it so I kind of got to hit it up, but push it up and then it's locked in place. So that is really, really cool. Really appreciate the uh, easiness and how awesome this cow is gonna look and how it mounts. So then all we have to do is uh, drill the 
cow mounts for these two wood screws and the cow will be good to go. So really cool. Now, you're probably wondering what this is because this is not stock with the kit. Uh, big shout out to shout out to Craig Osborne. He designed Thingiverse files for this 3D pin, 3D printed um, cow vein set, and this is really cool. We, you don't have to cut out the original cowling face. In fact, I'll flip it over and show that it's still in there. It just drops right in, and then I used, as you can see, three screws to secure it to the cow, and it makes this plane looks much better. A round cow warrior needs cow veins like this to look proper, and this one has it, so very, very nice. So anyway, with that being said, let's go ahead and get this cowling on. All right, now with the cow and also the prop and spinner. Look at that, that's very sharp looking. Uh, quick note though, I don't really recommend putting a prop on at this time, although I did test out my motor and everything and it works as it should, so I'm comfortable with having a prop on it. But generally, the prop is probably the last thing you wanna bolt on just to make sure nothing goes flying around the shop or accidental full throttle accidents. But anyway, now that the cow's on, I think we can install a, a radio gear now or the receiver, which um, involves plugging these guys in. This is the throttle, the ailerons, and the uh, elevator rudder, and get the receiver situated. That way we can move on to pretty much getting pretty close to finished up fully, uh, finishing up assembly, and that is hooking up the controls and getting them set. So anyway, let's go ahead and get a receiver in it and we will move on to the next step. All right, so I decided to do the receiver off camera because it's pretty self-explanatory. Plus, my brother wanted to take the GoPro out for a drone flight, so I said, I guess he can have it. But as you see, this is a receiver installation. All the elevator and rudder ex extensions are plugged into the receiver right here, as usual. And then um, this little device right here came with the T-Motor AM116 ESC. And that is a capacitor to re reduce voltage spikes, and a lot of people recommend I, we run it, so I decided to give it a shot for this plane. And that's just plugged into a separate or any spare channel on my receiver. We are now ready to hook up the linkages. Now, um, I don't know if you can hear or not, but the ESC fan, I don't know if I mentioned it, but that ESC's got a little fan and this thing's powered on, as you can see here. I went ahead and threw on the elevator horn. Um, and I made sure it was going the right direction, which this is going the proper direction. So we are good to go there. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sub trim it to 90 degrees because as you can see, it is slightly off. And I just like to eyeball it. I know a lot of people like to put like a square or a level or something, but as you can see there, that I think looks pretty good. Um, and we can continue operation like normal, as you can see. So. Next thing is we are going to prep the push rods for installation. Now I'm not going to use the stock ball links. I'm going with these Seacraft ball links that you can get at Gator RC. Uh, I like the color of these much better. They match my servo arm, even though there's no red on this plane. I think they look much nicer. Also the ball links fit in there quite a bit tighter than the Skywing ones. So I think they'll have a little bit less chance of getting slop. Not to say that um, they are they will have slop in the linkage if I use the stop ball links, but I just prefer these. So um, this is pretty self-explanatory. These just thread on to the rods, which by the way, for this plane, the rods are all the same. So it doesn't matter which one you choose. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these threaded on to the rods or the ball links threaded onto the rods. And we will get a approximation of how much, how long this push rod needs to be. I also have this elevator mask or have some masking tape holding the elevator in neutral so we can really get a fine tuning here. So let me go ahead and get a, these ball links installed to the push rod and then we will go ahead and continue on. Okay, so now that this, uh, I've got the ball links or this push rod with the ball links to pretty much the appropriate length. It's not probably gonna be 100% perfect and this is gonna be impossible to demonstrate on camera, but when I look at it, the holes uh, line up very well and then we get our loctite and we put a dribble there dip our screw in get a good anything metal to metal we put loctite on it and that includes servo arms 
and screw it in there. And then these are called pinch bolts right here and they help a lot in making sure your servo arm stays in place. So I'm gonna pull this one out. I'm also gonna blue lock tight it. So get this all tightened up and then we will get the hardware for setting up the linkage and we will move on. All right, so let's see how close we are with uh, nailing this push rod length. Um, ideally, I don't get it the first time. I don't know if anybody else does, but anyway. Hex head bolt here, 1.5 mil. We are going to just test it and see how it fits. All right, so let's see here. Yeah, it's pretty close. It's a little off, but as you see, it does work. Real nice and fine, so we are good to go. And it's just a little off, so I'm just gonna sub sub trim it back in. Like here's how close it is. Uh, let me get you off the camera stand. You can see it is just slightly off right there, but I mean that's enough to wear sub trim. We'll just fix that. So that being said, we're gonna go ahead and finish the linkage. And the way I like to do it is I like to go bolt washer ball link washer on the other side of the control arm and horn in this case and then the nut and that's will be the finished uh, linkage setup so let's get that done and we will move on to the next Thank you. 